In today's video, I'm going to talk about fractions and decimals. What are fractions? Fractions constitute part of a whole. So this is what it means. If you have this shape, a rectangle, a whole shape, and you divide that shape into four equal parts, we can say this is quarter. We can say this is quarter. We can say this is quarter. That's one over four, right? So we can say this is a fraction of this whole rectangle. So a fraction is a part of a whole. That's what a fraction is. A fraction is made up of two components. So a fraction is made up of a numerator and a denominator. And each of these are whole numbers. Or you call them integers. Integers and integers. So that's what a fraction is made of. So examples of fractions are 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 5, and so on. Now I'm going to talk about the various types of fraction. We have the following types of fraction. We have a proper fraction. So what is a proper fraction? A proper fraction is one in which the numerator is less than the denominator. So if you have a case where the numerator is less than the denominator. So that's what a proper fraction is. You can think about it this way. When something big carries something small, you say that's proper. So, so basically just use that to remember what a proper fraction is. When something below carries something above, that's a proper thing. So that's a proper fraction. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about an improper fraction. An improper fraction is one in which the numerator is greater than the denominator. The numerator is greater than the denominator, right? So that's what an improper fraction is. Of course, you can also remember it this way. When something below carries something heavier or something above, that's not proper. So that's what an improper fraction is. We have another type of fraction known as mixed fraction. In the case of a mixed fraction, you have a whole number, let's say 2, then you have an, a fraction beside it, so which in this case is 1 over 3, right? So this is a mixed fraction. It has a whole number. And it has a fractional part. But there's an interesting fact here. An improper fraction can be converted into a mixed fraction. So we can convert 5 over 3 by saying how many 3 can we find in 5? In this case, we can only get 1 3 out of 5. Then if you take that 1 3 out of 5, what are you going to be left with? You'll be left with 2. Then over 3. So we can easily convert from improper fraction into a mixed fraction. And you can also do the same thing. So if I have two whole number, 1 over 3, and I want to convert to mixed fraction, what I will do is I will say 2 times this 3, right? That will give me 6, then plus the numerator. Then altogether I have 7 over 3. So this is how you convert from mixed fraction to improper fraction. So we have other type of fraction, which I'm going to talk about short right away. We have another fraction known as like fractions. These are fractions with the same denominator. So if I have something like 1 over 5, 2 over 5, 
3 over 5. These are like fractions because they have same denominator. Then, as you can guess, we have unlike fractions. These are fractions with different denominators. So if I have 1 over 3 and I have 1 over 5 and let's say 2 over 7, in this case, they don't have, they have different denominator. Different denominator. Then we have another kind of fraction known as equivalent, equivalent fractions. So these are fractions that appear to be different, but if you simplify them, they give the same results. So let's say I have something like 2 over 6, and I have something like, let's say, 5 over 10. If you attempt to simplify 2 over 3, 2 over, okay, sorry, not 5 over 10, that's 5 over 15, rather. If you simplify 2 over 6, that will give you 1 over 3, and if you simplify 5 over 15, that will give you 1 over 3. So these two fractions are equivalent because they will give the same result if you simplify them. Now let's talk about how to perform some operation on fractions. Let's say we want to add the following fraction, 1 over 2 plus 1 plus 2 over 3. So we want to add this. How do you go about it? To add two fractions, especially two fractions that are unlike, that is, they don't have the same denominator, how do you go about it? You simply... You look. For, you simply look for the LCM. So the LCM is the lowest common multiple. The lowest common multiple. So this is simply the lowest number that two and three can go in. In other words, the lowest number that can be divided by two, and also divisible by 3. So, how do we go about that? To get the LCM of 2 and 3, what you want to do is to list all the mul some of the multiples of 2. So that's 2, that is numbers that, is, that are divisible by 2. That's 2. You have 4, you have 6, you have 8, and so on. What are the multiples of 3? You have 3, then what else is divisible by 3? You have 6, then you have 9, that's 3 times 3, that's 9, 3 times 4, that will give us 12, and so on. So, to get lowest common multiple, you look for the number, the lowest number that is common in both multiples, and that becomes your LCM. So, in this case, that number is 6. Then, 2 in 6, in other words, if you divide 6 by 2, what do you get? You get 3, 3 times the numerator here. That will give you 3. And here, 3 in 6, that's 2. 2 times this numerator here, that's 4. That's 2 times 2, that's 4. So if you add this 2, you're going to get 7 over 6. And that eventually will give you 1 whole number. If you convert it to a mixed fraction, that's 1 whole number. That's 6 and 7 is 1. Remember, 1 over 6. So this is how you add fractions. And how do you subtract the same thing? You you look for the for the lowest common multiple and then you subtract if it's, if you need to subtract. What if you have mixed? What if you have mixed fraction that you want to add? So let's say I have something like two whole number one over three plus three whole number two over five, for instance. So how do we add something like this? There are several ways. One way is to turn them to uh, improper fraction and that implies you take you say 3 times 2 that will give you 6 plus 1 that's 7 over 3 then 3 times 5 that, that gives you 15 plus 2 which is numerator that gives you 17 over 5 
then you can uh, you can decide to compute the LCM. If you compute the LCM of three and five, you're going to get fifteen. Then three in fifteen, that's five times seven, that will give you thirty-five. Five in fifteen, that's three plus times seventeen, that gives fifty-two, fifty-one. That gives fifty-one. So if you add them up, you will get 35 plus 51, and that will produce 86 over 15. So how many 15 can we get from 86? That's 5. And that will give us 5 times 15, that's 75, right? If you subtract 75 from 86, that will give you 11 over 15. So this is basically how you add up fractions. So let's talk about how we multiply and divide fractions. So to multiply a fraction, so let's have, let's say we we'll multiply a fraction like four over six times a fraction like two over twenty-four, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we multiply a fraction like this? So the so what you want to do first is to simplify. Simplify meaning you want to divide what can, what can be divided. So how do you divide? You can divide whatever is on top, can divide whatever is below. So I can say, okay, how many four can I get in 24? That is what, six. So you say four in four is one, right? Then four in 24 is six. Then I can say two here, one, two in six. That gives me three. So what's left? One times one, that's one. Six times three, that gives eighteen. So this is what you get. So no matter how uh, long the fraction is. So let's say you have another example like this. So let's say you have one number, a uh, two over fifteen times. Let's say two or number three over seven. Let's say times fourteen over 14 over 9. So how do you go about this? The first thing we want to do is to turn everything into mixed fraction, right? So to turn this into as uh, to turn it into proper fraction. So to, to do that you say 15 times 1 that gives 15 plus 2 that's 17 over 15 times 2 times 7 that's 14 plus 3 that gives 17 over 7, then times 14 over 9. So the next thing we do is to divide. So how do you go about a division? You look for things that are similar. So 7 here 1, 7 here is 2. So you ask yourself, what else can I divide? So in this case, we can't divide further. There's nothing that can divide themselves. So all you do is now to multiply everything at the top and multiply everything below. And that will give you 578 divided by 135. And if you convert this to a mixed fraction, you're going to get that will give you 4 whole number. And if you multiply 135 by 4, that will give you 540. If you subtract 540 from 578, the answer will be 30. 8 over 135. So it's whole number 38 over 135. So this is how you multiply fractions. So how do you divide fractions? So this is a bit interesting. So let's say I have 1 over 2 divided by, let's say I have 1 over 4. So how do I go about this? So what you want to do is, there are several ways, but I'm going to explain it this way. So, this is a fraction, right? And this is another fraction. So, how do you divide? One way is to turn the division into multiplication. So what that means is, instead of you having it in this format, you can find a way to turn it around. So turn it around, meaning you want to uh, take this division and make it in, 
turn it into multiplication. So, but why that? I'm going to explain it in a bit why that makes why we need to turn it around to convert to multiplication. But let's look at how it's done first. So, what you do basically is you say one over two times four over one. You just invert this one over four. And once you do that, you're going to get two in four. That gives you two. And that's also two times one. That will give you two over one. And then your answer is two. So this is how you divide. You take what is on the right and you invert it. Once you invert it, this sign changes from division to multiplication. So the way division addition works is this. If you invert something, you've turned it from either division to multiplication or multiplication to division. So that's it. But I'm going to explain another way to go about this. So another way you could solve this problem is to see it like this. So 1 over 2, right? Then divided by 1 over 4. So you can picture this division like this, right? If you picture it this way, it's almost like you taking a number at the top, which is like a numerator, divided by another number, which is like another denominator, which is a fraction. Another we can think about it is this. If you have, you can write it this way, 1 over 2, it's divided by 1 over 4, right? Now, just imagine you are multiplying both sides by the multiplicative inverse of 1 over 4. In other words, just imagine that you are multiplying both sides by the same thing. That's the numerator by 4 over 1, the denominator by 4 over 1. You will notice that 4 cancels out 4, and then 2 cancels out this 4, that's 2. So eventually, you're going to be left with 2 times 2, which is 2, 1 times 1, which is 1, then divided by 1 over 1, which is equivalent to 2 over 1, which is 2. So this allows to imagine uh, how to do the division. So this is basically why we, we we simply invert. Instead of going through this long process of breaking it, that you just invert the 1 over 4, and that gives you, that turns it into multiplication. So I'm going to give you another shortcut for dealing with this kind of division. So if I have um, 1 over 2 divided by 1 over 4, another easy way I could just do this is I could simplify this is to say I multiply this to far times far. So just think about it this way, far times far. Think about the two extreme ends. I call them far times far. So that's 1 times 4. That's the extreme end divided by near times near. So think about these two, they are very close to themselves. So that's two times one. If you do this, you, you will get the same result. Though. So this is another way to think about it. Far times far divided by near times near. And that will give you the same result, which is two. So now let's talk about decimals. What are decimal numbers? Or what are decimals? Decimal numbers are numbers with integer parts. A decimal point and a non-integer part. So let me explain what I mean. So if I, if you have a number like this, 25.33. Now you see that we've got an integer part. So this is an integer section, right? This is a decimal number. So this is a decimal point, a decimal point, and this is the these are the non-integers. So they're basically the non -whole, they are not whole numbers, basically. So that's what constitutes a decimal. So but I'm going to explain what each place, what position each of these numbers are occupying. So let's say we have 25, the same number, 25.33. In this case, we call this position where this 5 is, we call it the, the units. So we call it the units or the, the ones, basically. Then this we call the tens. Let's say we have another number here, right? This we call the hundreds, the hundred with an S, right? And so on. So if you have a thousand and so on, this is decimal point. Then this 
we call this position, the position of this number is the tenth with, with th, right? This one is hundred with th and so on. So what this unit tenths means is whatever you have for the units, what it implies is whatever you have is equivalent to that number times one. You understand times one. Then when you talk about the tens, you are talking about times ten. Hundred is times ten raised to the power of two, which is hundred, right? And so on. And what about the tens? What about ten? The th. It means whatever you have there you, is you multiply by ten raised to the power of minus one, so which is equivalent to one over ten, right? Then hundred is 10 raised to the power of minus 2, which is something like this, 1 over 100. So, which means I can write 1, 2, 5.33 as 1 times whatever the place value is. So, which is, in this case, 1 is 100, right? It's an S, 100. So, that's times 100, then plus 2 times its place value, which is 10. So this 10 plus 5 times 1, then plus 3 times 1 over 10, then plus 3 times 1 over 100. So if you if you add this up, you will get this decimal. So this is what a decimal number system is all about. So this is what it's all about. So now, what, are, what how do you perform what are various types of decimal numbers and how do you perform operations on them? So let's talk about those. So what are the type of decimal numbers that we have? We have decimal numbers that are terminating. So we have terminating decimals. So what are they? Terminating decimals are decimals that have uh, non-integer parts that, that that do come to a stop basically. So if you have a decimal numbers that ha that whose non-integer part uh, 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 has a is a kind of finite numbers that is doesn't extend to infinity, so to speak. We call that term terminating decimal. So let me give an example. So if you have a number like zero point two five, right? So this because the number does not continue indefinitely. This is an example of terminating decimal, right? So when you have a decimal that terminates, basically, the decimal sec the non-integer section does not continue forever. We call that as uh, terminating decimal. Then we have what we call the recurring decimals. So these are decimals that do not really the, the non-integer part do not really have an end, so they just continue indefinitely. So let's take a look at an example. So if I have 0 0.3333 that continues forever, this is an example of recurring decimals. It could also be of this type, maybe 0 0.211111, or it could, be, it could also be of this type, 0 0.252525. So in this case, the recurring part is 25. And you could also have a case where you have 271, then maybe you have a 517, 517, and so on. The 517 continues to repeat. So these are examples of recurring decimals. Then, thirdly, we have uh, what is commonly known as irrational, irrational numbers. So these are numbers that that there are decimal numbers that do not have, they are not terminating, so they are non-terminating. That is, they continue forever. They are non-terminating. They continue forever, that's what it means. Then they are non-recurring. So it means they continue forever, but then they do not have any re repeating pattern. So if you have a number like this, let's say 0 
one five three seven zero one two one there's no repetition in any way then you can refer to this as a an irrational number an example of an irrational number a very common example is pi pi is not is not terminated there's no repetition so it's approximately it basically is it continues forever the approximate value of pi is 3.14159265535589 and so on. It does not repeat in any sense. So this is an example of an irrational number. So I'm going to talk about how to convert terminating decimals and recurring decimals to fraction. Fractions and decimals they are very very much related so i'm going to explain how to convert from fractions to decimals and decimals to fraction so let's take a look so let's start with terminating decimals so if you have 0 0.25 i want to convert to fraction right how do you go about it so what you do basically is you count the number of times you need to move this point out of this decimals right so if you want to take this decimal this decimal point away from these numbers you have to move one two right so then what you do is you take this 25 then you divide it by one and the number of zeros to this one is the number of times you move so if you're going to move twice it means you divide by one with two zeros if you're going to move three times with three zeros so in this case you've turned this to you've turned 0 0.25 to a fraction so the next thing you want to do is to simplify that is divide further so how many five can you find here that is five then how many five can you find in ten that's a two in zero zero then if you divide for that one if you divide here that will give you that will give you four so eventually this one over four right but if you have something like zero point one two five so this is more so in this case you just write one two five right then divided by one with some zeros. So how many zeros? You count one, two, three. You, you have to move three times to move out of these numbers. So you divide by one with three zeros. That's one thousand. If you divide this, you will get the following. So if you divide this by five, five and twelve, that will give you two. Then you made that two thousand twenty-five. That's five. Five in hundred, as we got earlier, is twenty. Then in zero, that's zero. So if you divide Five here that will give you five. Five here is forty. Then if you divide four, that you get eight. So the answer is one by eight. So that's how you divide. That's how you convert decimals. That's uh, terminating decimals to fractions. What about recurring decimal? How do you convert recurring decimals to fractions? So, so let's say you have a number like this. So you have a number like zero point six 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 and so on so it is the six continues indefinitely right how do you convert this to fraction so what's the equivalence of this in fraction so this is how you you take care of this the first thing you want to do is you want to assume that okay let's say a is the answer right a equals 0 0.6666 and so on and so forth right now how do you turn this into a fraction so this is what you need to do you need to ask yourself how many times do i need to move this decimal to get another number that is recurring and and that has a recurring part that is very similar to what you have before so in this case if you move this by one step that is if you move it by one step like this you will still have a recurring part right so, but the point is, you want to get another value that we have a recurring fraction as the initial value, right? The recurring part here should be the same as this as this recurring part. So, basically, what you're what you're going to do here is you want to multiply a by ten. If you multiply a by ten. And you multiply this original value by 10 this is what i'm going to get because if i say 10 times whatever i have here that will give me 6.66 and so on right 
Now, what we want to do is to subtract. So, subtract this 10a. Subtract a from 10a. So, what I mean is, if you take this 10a, you subtract a from it, and you do the same thing here, right? You subtract the right-hand side, so that's 6.6666 and so on, minus 0 0.6666 and so on. If you do that, you see that since these two, they have the same recurring fraction, they're going to cancel out, right? Then what you're going to be left with is, is you're going to be left with 6 minus 0. That will give you 6. Then if you subtract this, that will give you 9a, right? And a is 6 over 9. And that will give you 3 in 6. That will give you 2. 3 in 9. That will give you 3. So it means the answer is 3. 2 over 3. That will give you 0 0.6666 indefinitely. So this is how you convert a uh, recurring fraction. But there are more complex ones. There are more difficult ones. So let's take a look at other tricky cases of recurring decimals. So let's say you are, you are asked to convert 0 0.12. Let's say 1, 2, then you have 5, 5, Five, for instance, and the five continues indefinitely. You are asked to convert this to a fraction, and these are recurring uh, decimals. How do you go about it? One way to solve this is this is how you solve it. So let's start with the same strategy. Take it to be equal to zero point one two five five five. So the first thing we do is you want to take away, you want to rewrite this such that the decimal comes right after the recurring part. So this is what I mean. Ask yourself, where do we have the starting point of the recurring part here, right? Where do we have the next recurring part? It's here because this 5 reoccurs. So our recurring is after this 5, 5, right? So the first one we do is, how many times, can, how many steps will you take to move to this first recurring part? And how many steps will you take to move to this second recurring part? So that this are the first, these are the major decisions you have to make. So if you if this point is to move to this point, how many steps are you going to take? One, two, right? One, two. So which means I'm going to multiply by hundred. You know, hundred has two zeros. So you're going to multiply a by hundred. If you do that, you're going to get this twelve point five five five. Then the next is to ask yourself how many steps are you going to take to move to this next recurring part? So that's one, two, three. So you're going to multiply that this same a by a thousand since it has three zeros. So that will give you one, two, five point five five. Note that this five continues indefinitely, right? It's a recurring decimal. It continues indefinitely. So since we've achieved this, we've we've successfully made this rational, this non-integer part to be the same, exactly the same. We can subtract. So we can just simply take this one thousand, subtract the bigger one from the smaller one from the bigger one. So that's one thousand a minus hundred a equals one twenty-five point five 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 minus twelve point five. Five, five. If you subtract this, you're going to get 900a. If you subtract this, the decimal parts will disappear. The fractional, the non-integer part will disappear. So if you subtract this, you're going to get 3. That's 5 minus 2, 3. Then you subtract this, that gives you 1, 1. So this is what you get, right? So your a is equal to 1, 1, 3 divided by 900. And then you can simplify for that if it can be simplified. So the next is, so we're done with this. So let me show you one more example, a more interesting example. So let's say you have, I'm going to use this example here. So let's take a look at this example. 0 0.218, and it continues forever, right? So the first one we do is let's say let's take a to be equal to 0 
218.18.18, right? So the next thing I want to do is I want to determine where is the starting point of the recurring fraction. The starting point is here, right? Of this recurring decimal is here. This it, this is the starting point. The, the, if the, this is where we have the first repetition, right? The next start here, right? Then the next start here. So the first decision I want to make is how many steps I want to take to move to this first starting point, and how many steps I want to take to move to this second starting point. So let's take a look at this. So to move to this first starting point, you move by just one step, right? That means you multiply by 10. Since you have one step, the zero here will be one. So you multiply by 10. And if you do that, that will give you 2.181818 and so on. The next is the next starting point is one, two, three. So you're going to move three steps to move to the next starting point. So that will give you three steps, means three zeros, right? Then you multiply by 1000 and that gives you 218.181818 because this is a recurring decimal, right? Now, the next one is subtract. So just subtract this from. 10 from 1000. So that's 1000a minus 10a equals subtract this. That's 218.1818 and so on minus 2.1818 and so on. So if you subtract this, that will give you 990, right? 990a. And if you divide, if you subtract this, that will give you. Two two one six, and then a becomes two one six divided by nine nine zero. You can simplify for that. If you simplify, that will give you one oh eight divided by four nine five. So we can simplify for that into twelve over fifty five. And that's if you divide both sides by 9. So this is the final answer. So we've talked about fractions and we've talked about the various type of fractions. We also talked about how to uh, perform addition, subtraction, multiplication on fractions. Then we talked about decimals, the various type of decimals, and how to convert from decimals to fraction. So now let's talk about how to add decimals. And also multiply decimals. So let's take a look. So how do we add two decimal numbers? So let's say you have 0 0.126. And you want to add 0 0.1, let's say 7, 3, 4, right? How do you go about adding them? You add them in accordance with their position or their place. So you add the uh thousands to the thousands the hundreds to the hundreds the tenths with the tenth and so on so let's add this up so this will give you six plus four that will give you ten so you have zero you carry one as usual then one plus two plus three that gives you six then one plus seven that's eight then point zero plus zero plus zero that's zero but let's take a look at this example what if i have something like 0 0.76 plus 120.5, for instance. So how do we add this up? So to add this up, you have to align them. So you have to say, okay, I have 0 0.76, right? Then plus what? So you have to align them. So this is the tenth position, right? The 5, the 120, we have to be positioned like this. This position is the the tenth, the tenth position. It must be under this this one, which is under which is of tenth position. And the same thing goes to this. Then what you do next is to part with zero. You can just part with zero here. You can part with zero and zero. You can just, or you can leave this zero blank, right? So now we can add. The the most important thing to note here is you have to align them properly. This five can't be under six because the position of this five is tenth. So you have to align them properly. So 6 plus 0, that gives you 6. 7 plus 5, that gives you 
12. So you have right 2, you carry 1. So the 1 goes here. So 1 plus 0 plus 0, that gives you 1. Then 0 plus 2, 2, then you have 1. So this is the answer for this case. So the same thing goes to subtraction. Addition, subtraction, very similar. Just ensure you align them properly. So let's talk about multiplication. So how do we multiply decimals? So if I have 0 point, let's say 1, 6, and I have 1 multiplied by 0 point, uh, let's say 5, for instance. So how do I multiply? So as, as stated again, you have to align them properly. So you have this 1 under 5, or 5 under 1, and, and you can attach 0 to this, right? So you don't need to, if you have 0 here, you don't need to multiply by 0 because if you do that, if you say 0 times 0, whatever you get will be 0. You understand? So you can start with 5. So what I mean is if you multiply all by 0, if you say 0 times uh, 6, that will give you 0. 0 times 1, that will give you 0. And 0 times 0, that will give you 0. So it doesn't make any difference here. But then it may make it may be important to do this if you want if if you want to ensure that they are, they are they are all well aligned. So that's one of the reasons why you have to multiply with zeros. Other than that, it's not going to make any, any big difference to your result. So the next is to multiply by 5. 5 times 6, that will give you 30. So you add, you have 0, then you carry 3, right? Then 5 times 1, that will give you 5 plus 3. That will give you 8. Then 5 times 0, that gives you 0. So in this case, you can multiply by 0 as well, but this is not going to make any difference. 0 times 0, everything gives you 0. So now let's add this, right? So if you add this up, that will give you 0, 0, then 8, 0. But now the problem is, where do we put the decimal point? That is, where should our decimal point be positioned, right? The decimal point should be positioned as follows. You need to count how many numbers do you have in front of, behind this decimal point. That's two, right? They were about the numbers behind this decimal point. That's two. So you need to add those together. So two, you have two numbers behind the decimal point. Two numbers behind this decimal point. So that's four altogether. So what you do here is now to count four. So you have to move this with one, two, three, four. So this is where you position the decimal. So a decimal comes after the fourth number, counting from the right. So then you can just complete this with a zero. So this is the answer here. So this is very important. This is how you actually multiply decimals. You first and foremost align the uh, the, the, the numbers. Then you do your multiplication the usual way. Don't bother about adding the decimal here. Just do your multiplication the usual way. Then after adding them up, then you count the number, of the number, the numbers, be uh, in front of the decimal point. And once you get that number, you move that step to position your decimal here. So this is how you add. This is how you multiply decimals, decimal numbers. So this brings us to the end of fractions and decimals.